find you struggle when it comes to painting portraits. Do people really struggle painting us? Yeah, apparently. A lot of people struggle with confidence over it. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you five top tips that's really going to help boost your confidence. Coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And today we're talking all about portraiture and how you can be helped to create something like this just with these simple five top tips. Now before we start, I want it to be known, this is not about trying to do a really accurate drawing guys. You're gonna see loads of those uh, performers or those schematics online about how to get the accurate face drawing. This is going past that. All right, so this is assuming that you maybe know some of the basics, but if you're really lacking confidence in terms of just getting the paints out there, these top tips are gonna help you with that. Let's have a look. Grid systems, if you've ever tried to enlarge a photograph, the way you need to be doing that is using a grid system, just like you can see here, guys. The best way I find to do this is if you get a really clean, simple photograph, or if you find it's quite complicated, then you can do what I've done with my photograph here, where I've actually just played around with Photoshop just to try and simplify the actual image. Once you've got that basic image, you can see how I've done a grid system here where I've labeled at the top with letters and then down the side with numbers. This enables me to give me complete reference points every single time I'm drawing box by box. And that is the key that you simply go box by box. So if you take your drawing down to a basic line drawing, and if you start, for example, at A1, whatever you see in that box that's a line, you're simply going to replicate it. And the great thing here, of course, you can make the boxes as small or as big as you like. The smaller they are, the easier it is, but of course it can get a little bit too complicated if they're too many. So I always find about five or six boxes per drawing is a really good amount. Then you can see how I've enlarged it. So you've got to make sure that the ratio of size of box is the same that you're not gonna change the shape of your actual drawing. And if you can master this technique, guys, it really does help you to produce really effective drawings, particularly from photographs. Top tip number two. This is not a cheat. Tracing is not a cheat. If you're selling your painting as though it's an original that you have drawn from scratch, that's cheating. What we're trying to show you today, guys, is how these little tips can really help to encourage you to want to paint more regularly and to obviously boost your confidence. So if you're taking something like this picture here that I've printed off the internet of Bob Marley, all I've done is simply go over the outline on the back. You can actually either then transfer this straight onto a canvas just by rubbing quite gently and it will actually enable the pencil to show up on your canvas as an outline. Or you can obviously do it on the front, you're just gonna have a reverse image of what you do. This is not about trying to draw accurate faces, guys. It's about how to really encourage you to do those paintings. So once again, this is not a cheat. It is just another way to get you out there to hopefully get you painting portraits. Tip number three, this is for when you've actually done the painting now and you want to try and create a more realistic effect of skin tone. I find if you use something like this, which is a really natural sponge, so it's got much larger holes in this than a regular kitchen sponge, it helps you to get some gorgeous stippling effects when it comes to creating skin tone. So you can see with this painting here, just by simply putting the base layer of tones onto the painting originally, you can then distribute that tone using a sponge like this, and it really does create a very realistic effect. So this is more for an actual painting technique. I've obviously gone with quite an unnaturalistic color here with the John Snow painting using a very dark and light blue. If you can do this with skin tones as well, it's just as effective. So next time you do a painting, guys, and you're really struggling to try and get those tonal effects of the face, try using a sponge. Tip number four, I'm gonna sound like a teacher now, but practice, practice, practice. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing this for. I've been painting for over 30 years and I still practice every single day to try and hone in my skills and my techniques. So I find with portraiture the key to making anything look realistic is the eyes. If you can draw or paint realistic eyes, you're gonna be onto a winner. Eyes, noses, mouths, they're usually the things that let people down. So you wanna be really, really accurate when it comes to trying to get those tonal qualities and also the line drawing as well. Tip number five, 
This is not a cheat. This is one of my favorite little tricks and it's what got me into painting originally. It's where you actually paint over an original painting. So for example, good old Mona Lisa here. This was done for a recent party with some friends where we had a bit of a, a grisly theme going on, hence the, the split neck. But this is a photograph or not an actual photograph, but this is a photocopy of Mona Lisa. Um, and all I've done is simply paint over. So the reason I'm saying this is not cheating, because if you do things like this, guys, it's all about practicing skin tones, practicing tone of colors, and really understanding how those faces are structured. And if you're actually painting directly onto the photograph itself, onto the photocopy itself, you're going to very quickly pick up some of those techniques and understand where those tonal areas work and where the light is coming from. So when you do your own paintings, you'll have a much greater understanding of how to generate those same colors. The other thing I love about things like this is, of course, you can change the background. So I've done mine a little bit more naturalistically, but I could easily have put Mona Lisa in the middle of a city, or I could have put her in a forest, or I could have put her in the house. Wherever you want, you can change up the background and have a lot of fun. So if you've never tried this before, take yourself a photocopy, get yourself some paint. All I've done is PVA glue this on top to give it a nice solid layer, and then I've put some paint, acrylic paint, on top. So there you have it guys, some five top tips on how to really help you to boost your confidence when it comes to painting portraiture. Most of these tips involve you just giving it a go. And again, it's always about confidence and about practice. So if you have tried one of these techniques guys and it's been successful, I'd love to hear from you. Maybe leave a comment below. Or if you've tried something else that really works well for you, I'd also love to hear those tips as well, guys. If you have enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button just below as it really does help our channel. And if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips, just like this, we do do videos every Wednesday and Saturday. So do hit that notification bell and subscription just below. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time. Happy painting. Happy painting.